So design, visualize, and create with Autodesk Mudbox. Um, what we're going to cover in this class is a, a, a wide variety of uses for Mudbox in many different industries. Mudbox is now bundled with all of these different design suites. So it's outside of media entertainment now. It's not just there anymore. Uh, we have architects using it. Uh, as you'll see, I'll be showing some interesting things there. Manufacturing uh, division, manufacturing industry using um, for many things as well. And I hope to kind of touch on these different areas and at the very least uh, open your eyes to what we can do with Mudbox and how it fits into your workflow. Um, so these are the learning objectives from the handout. I'm not sure if anyone has the handout, the PDF that's up on the, uh, uh, on the site. It's been there for a while. Um, the PowerPoint and, and what I show live in Mudbox follows along with the, the handout. The handout does have some uh, additional tips and tricks and uh, little reference uh, notes and links for uh, anything else to help you out with. So we'll start off with a brief history of Mudbox, and then we're going to go into kind of what I call focus areas, where, where we'll kind of focus on um, some different strategies within Mudbox. And as you can see, I've kind of branched it out into architecture. There's an automotive area, and there's this product design and direct media creation. Everything I'm showing in every different area isn't absolutely specific to architectural stuff. You'll see things that I show in each one. Um, that can be done in automotive or things that are done in automotive that can be done in architecture or whatever. So it's, it is kind of a three focuses, as I like to call it. If we could save the uh, question and answers for the end, that would be great. So Mudbox, a brief history. Uh, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to just play a little um, kind of uh, edit reel of what Mudbox is about. So brief history of Mudbox. Mudbox comes from uh, the, the feature film and games industry. Uh, Mudbox was developed by uh, a group of very talented individuals at Weta during the uh, early on in the production of Lord of the Rings. And what they required was a package that could handle very high resolution, uh, very dense um, data and be able to provide the high resolution detail that that project required for on screen. Um, there wasn't really anything out there that fit into the pipeline. Uh, that they were using, so Mudbox was developed. And Mudbox was originally developed to provide all of those crazy high-res details of the creatures, um, skin effects, wrinkles, pores, scales, up-close shots on uh, a lot of the CG creatures. From there, Mudbox has grown into a whole bunch of different areas um, over time. So in this video, you're seeing a bunch of uh, different features that have been added over time. We're seeing some pose tools now that are available on Mudbox. And we'll play with that. I'll touch on that in uh, this class here. Well, we'll see the pose tools aren't just for posing characters, as we're seeing in this video. They're actually pretty powerful deformation tools. Um, so with Mudbox here, um, just a brief history there uh, and where we're going with it. I um, hope to touch on a little bit of that. You can see some sketching going on here. Mudbox, of course, uh, has three powerful areas, the, uh, the first one being sculpting. Second one being texture painting. We've actually added a whole new core to that in the latest release. And the third one uh, being presentation, which we'll touch on uh, throughout this, this presentation here as well. So I'm going to move on to the, the uh, next area of the slide here. The Mudbox community. And the reason why I put this in here so we can talk about the Mudbox community is I, I did a class earlier today with um, Mudbox using uh, developing a concept for a product and then going into alias design. And it's important to note that there are many different sources of where you can start from in Mudbox. Uh, you can start with default primitives. It's pretty incredible what a lot of artists out there do with a simple sphere in Mudbox. It's actually quite shocking what a lot of people produce with a sphere or a cube just to get, you know, roughing out a, a creature or a car or a product, whatever it may be. So the reason why I put this up here is the Mudbox community is a live connection right within Mudbox, right in the UI. There's a little uh, tab right in the top corner up here that has this live connection to the community where you can grab stencils, textures, um, reference images, different stamps uh, to affect your sculpting workflow, as well as upload things that you may have created. You can upload on the fly base meshes, uh, any different effect that, or, or artifact there that may help out another artist as well. Um, there's also an interesting gallery up there of um, work in progress, also finished work, turntables, rendered images. 
So this is just a quick uh, view of working with the Mudbox community. It kind of brings a different element to Mudbox. Rather than just relying on your library of textures or meshes or your external 3D app, live in this ever-growing community, you can grab pieces of geometry and, and different uh, pieces of data to help your, your workflow. So where Mudbox fits in? So Mudbox fits in um, to, an, and absolutely in, in, in any pipeline, um, for the idea of really rapid concept creation, this freeform 3D sketching, this ability to be able to take geometry and, and rapidly um, be able to form or explore shapes and uh, be able to build up rapid um, ideas for, for getting your point across much quicker and much more powerful than just a simple sketch and much less time consuming than jumping into um, another package where you may have to uh, you know, get into some intricate uh, poly modeling or surface and curve modeling in something like Alias. Uh, as well with the visualization and uh, the ability to handle very high resolution data um, and be able to render that real time as we'll see here. Um, so I talked about the Mudbox community and how you can actually go on there and grab some base meshes. You can use the default primitives within Mudbox, but uh, Mudbox has a very strong connection with any external 3D package, specifically, um, for obvious reasons, Maya, Max, and Soft. Um, all of the modeling tools work very well in conjunction, back and forth, live with Mudbox. And now with Alias, the ability to actually take your geometry and bring it in and at least use it as a reference or a building platform to build upon for a product, for example. Um, so this idea of being able to, being free or untethered to explore during the, the, the uh, conceptualizing or conceptual stage. It allows you to more quickly explore design alternatives. Um, in Mudbox, I say it on the handout, I'll say it throughout this many times, you cannot overuse layers. It's imperative to use layers. There are some incredibly talented guys out there that I've seen that just refuse to use a layer. And I've never understood that. That's great. They can do amazing stuff. But as you'll see in this, layers allow you to store uh, iterations, different variations in design for whatever it may be. Uh, fabric and material iterations, um, as well as it stores a very good history of your sculpting workflow.